In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the derivative using the definition of the derivative formula. So basically, we need to find the derivative of a function using the limit process. And f prime of x represents the derivative of f of x. And it's equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So that's the formula that we need to use. So let's say if f of x is a linear function, 5x minus 4. What is f prime of x? What's the first derivative of this function? So go ahead and try that. Now, what is f of x plus h? How can we find that? Well, if f of x is 5x minus 4, then f of x plus h is going to be 5 times x plus h minus 4. So all you need to do is, in f of x, wherever you see an x, replace it with x plus h. So now, let's plug in everything into this formula. So it's going to be the limit as h approaches 0, and then it's going to be 5 x plus h minus 4, and then minus f of x, which f of x is 5x minus 4. And so we're going to divide all of this by h. Now, let's simplify. So first, we need to distribute 5 to x plus h. And don't forget to rewrite the limit expression until you get your final answer. So it's going to be 5x plus 5h minus 4 and then distribute the negative sign. So it's going to be negative 5x plus 4 divided by h. Now 5x and negative 5x, they add up to 0. Negative 4 plus 4 is equal to 0. So we're left over with the limit as h approaches 0, 5h divided by h. And the h terms cancel. h divided by h is 1. And so the limit as h approaches 0 for a constant like 5, since there's no h in this expression anymore, this is simply equal to 5. So that's the derivative of 5x minus 4. It's 5. Now let's try another example. So let's say if f of x is equal to x squared, what is the first derivative of the function? Go ahead and use the definition of the derivative to find f prime of x. So first let's use the formula. f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So if f of x is equal to x squared, what is f of x plus h? That's the first thing you need to decide. So all we have to do is replace x with x plus h. So it's going to be x plus h squared. So we have the limit as h approaches 0, x plus h squared minus f of x, which is originally just x squared, divided by h. Now. We need to FOIL x plus h squared. So I'm going to expand it for now. So what we really have is x plus h times another x plus h. So let's FOIL. x times x, that's going to be x squared. And since I'm running out of space, I'm going to put this on the top. And then x times h, that's xh. And then we have to multiply h times x, which is also xh. And finally, h times h, that's going to be h squared. And then minus x squared, all divided by h.
Now let's combine like terms and let's cancel. x squared and negative x squared adds up to 0. And xh plus xh, well that's 2xh. And so we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0 for 2xh plus h squared divided by h. Now what do you think we need to do at this point? Once you get to this step, what we need to do is factor out an h. If we take out an h, the GCF, 2xh divided by h is 2x. And h squared divided by h, well, that's h. Now we could cancel the h variables on the outside. h divided by h is 1. So this gives us the limit as h approaches 0 for 2x plus h. So now we're going to apply this limit expression. We're going to replace h with 0. So it's going to be 2x plus 0, which is 2x. So if f of x is equal to x squared, the derivative f prime of x is equal to 2x based on the definition formula of the derivative. And that's the answer. Now let's work on another example. So let's say if we have 1 over x. What is the first derivative of 1 over x? By the way, feel free to pause the video and try these examples yourself. So first, let's find f of x plus h. So if we replace x with x plus h, we're going to get 1 over x plus h. Now let's start with the formula. f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now f of x plus h, we said it's 1 over x plus h, and f of x is 1 over x. And this is all divided by h. So here we have a complex fraction. What should we do in a situation like this? If you have a complex fraction, multiply the top and the bottom by the common denominator of these two fractions. So the common denominator is going to be x times x plus h. Whatever you do to the top, you must also do to the bottom of the complex fraction. Now we need to multiply. So if we take this fraction and multiply it by x times x plus h, the x plus h terms will cancel, eliminating this fraction, and what we have left over is simply x. So right now we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0, and on top we have an x right now. Now let's take the second fraction, multiply by that uh, term. So if we do that, x will cancel, and we're going to get x plus h with a negative sign in front of it. So this is going to be negative x plus h. And on the bottom, we simply just need to write these things together. So it's going to be h times x times x plus h. Now let's distribute the negative sign. So we're going to have the limit as h approaches 0, x minus x minus h. x plus negative x adds up to 0. And so this is going to give us the limit as h approaches 0, negative h divided by h times x times x plus h. Negative h divided by h is negative 1. So now we have the limit as h approaches 0, negative 1 over x times x plus h. As soon as you cancel that h, you can now use direct substitution. So we can apply this limit expression. Let's replace h with 0. Now x plus 0 is x. So we have x times x, which is x squared. So the answer is negative 1 divided by x squared. 
and that is the derivative of 1 over x. Now let's say that f of x is equal to the square root of x. What is the first derivative f prime of x? Go ahead and try that. So let's start with the formula. f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now in this problem, what do you think f of x plus h represents? Now don't forget, all we need to do is replace x with x plus h. So it's going to equal the square root of x plus h. And f of x is simply the square root of x. Now what should we do if we have radicals in a fraction? To simplify this expression, you need to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. So the conjugate is going to have the same expression, square root x plus h and square root x. The difference is, instead of a negative sign, we are going to have a positive sign. So now let's FOIL what we have on top. So the square root of x plus h times itself, the square roots will cancel, and you're going to get x plus h. And then we have these two terms, which is going to be plus square root x, square root x plus h. And then if we multiply those two terms, negative square root x times square root x plus h. And finally, the square root of x times the square root of x is simply x. And don't forget about the negative sign. And on the bottom, don't distribute. Simply just, I would recommend just rewriting it. Now the square root of x times the square root of x plus h, um, we have a positive term and a negative one, so they're going to add up and cancel to 0. x and negative x will also add up to 0. So now we're left with the limit as h approaches 0, and it's h divided by h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. And as you know, h divided by h is 1. So we're left with the limit as h approaches 0. And we have this expression. Now, what we need to do is direct substitution. We need to replace h with 0 at this point. So x plus 0 will simply be x. Now the square root of x plus the square root of x, there's a coefficient of 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So you should get 1 over 2 square root x. By the way, this limit expression should no longer be here. When you replace h with 0, this expression disappears. So it shouldn't be in this step anymore. This is the final answer. So that's the first derivative of the square root of x. Now what if the square root is in the bottom of a fraction? Like if we have 8 over the square root of x, what's the first derivative of this function? Well first, let's find f of x plus h. So it's going to equal that. Now let's use the limit process to find the derivative. So f of x plus h is going to be 8 over the square root of x plus h. And I'm forgetting the limit expression. This is why it's always good to rewrite the formula. Just to avoid making mistakes. So we have the limit as h approaches 0. And then f of x plus h is 8 over the square root of x plus h, and then minus f of x, and then divided by h. So now we have a complex fraction with radicals. So basically we have two problems combined into one. We have the 1 over x problem with the square root of x problem. So what I recommend is eliminating 
the fractions within the larger fractions. So I'm going to multiply by the common denominator, just to begin. So it's going to be the square root of x times the square root of x plus h. So these terms will cancel, leaving behind 8 times the square root of x. And then when I multiply this fraction by that term, the square root of x will cancel, leaving behind these two. So it's going to be negative 8 square root x plus h. And on the bottom, simply rewrite these things together. So it's going to be h times the square root of x times the square root of x plus h. Now, what should we do at this point? What's our next move here? So, since we have radicals in the numerator, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the numerator. And so that's going to be 8 square root x plus 8 square root x plus h divided by the same thing. So let's FOIL the stuff on top. So 8 square root x times itself. What is that going to give us? Well, we know 8 times 8 is 64. And the square root of x times the square root of x is x. Next, we have 8 times 8, which is 64. And then square root x, square root x plus h. And then we have the two middle terms. This is going to be negative 64 square root x, square root x plus h. And then finally, negative 8 times 8, and then square root x plus h times itself, which is just going to be x plus h. And on the bottom, just rewrite everything. Now, this is a very long problem, but if you have a problem like this on a test, this is what you have to do. So first, we could cancel these two terms, and then let's distribute negative 64 to x plus h. So what we have now is 64x, and then negative 64x, and negative 64h, divided by everything on the bottom. Now let's cancel those two terms. And so we're left with limit as h approaches 0, negative 64h, divided by everything that is in the denominator, which is a lot of stuff. Now in the next step, we could cancel h. Because as soon as we can do that, we can use direct substitution. We can get rid of the other h variables in the bottom. But right now we have the limit as h approaches 0, negative 64 over square root x, square root x plus h, and so forth. So now I'm going to replace h with 0, so I'm no longer going to write the limit expression. So it's negative 64, and then we have square root x, now this is going to be square root x plus 0, which is also square root x, and then 8 times the square root of x. And then we're going to replace h with 0 there, so that's going to be 8 square root x as well. Now, the square root of x times the square root of x is x, and then 8 plus 8 is 16. And then we could divide negative 64 by 16. So we're going to get negative 4 over x square root x. 
And so you can leave the answer like that if you want to. x square root x is also x to the 3 halves. You could write it that way too. But that's the answer. Now the last example I'm going to go over is a polynomial function. So let's say we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 9. What's the first derivative of this function? So first, what's f of x plus h? Let's decide that. So instead of writing x squared, we're going to write x plus h squared. Instead of writing 5x, it's going to be 5 times x plus h. So then f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0, and then f of x plus h, that's x plus h squared, minus 5x plus h plus 9. And then minus f of x, which is x squared, minus 5x plus 9. Don't forget to distribute the negative sign, and this is all divided by h. So first, we need to expand x plus h squared already. Now, we've done that early in this video. So x plus h times x plus h, we found that it was x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Now we need to distribute the 5. So it's going to be negative 5x minus 5h plus 9. And then distribute this negative sign. So it's going to be negative x squared plus 5x minus 9. All divided by h. So x squared and negative x squared can be canceled negative 5x and 5x would disappear, and 9 and negative 9 we can get rid of. So now we have left over the limit as h approaches 0. So we have h squared plus 2xh minus 5h divided by h. Now let's factor out the greatest common factor in the numerator, which is h. So h squared divided by h is h. 2xh divided by h is 2x. Negative 5h divided by h is negative 5. So now we could cancel uh, those two. And so we have the limit as h approaches 0, h plus 2x minus 5. Now let's use direct substitution. Let's replace h with 0. So 0 plus 2x minus 5 is simply 2x minus 5. So that's the first derivative of x squared minus 5x plus 9. It's 2x minus 5.